All right, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon to all our teachers and students and to our speaker, Professor Tay. Thank you for joining us. Uh, this is uh, what we call Nature Hero Talks 3.0. Just like MCO 3.0, we also have a number, we also 3.0. And in this series, we are talking about environmental literacy, basically looking at the sustainable uh, development goals. And also we've picked up some of the items that are related to the environment for that purpose. And uh, this particular series is uh, basically uh, tailored towards um, more towards high school because it will be a very basic level. And uh, we've decided to do this because we noticed that we need you children to, to understand about environment, especially when you're still young so that you will be the future that will help us um, to protect uh, this earth, to take care of the environment, so that your children will also be able to, to live in a sustainable way on this earth. So we thank you for joining us. We thank also the teachers for uh, taking care of the children and also for encouraging them to join this particular uh, series of talks. And let me just go through. So. My name is Wuti. I'm from the Malaysian Nature Society NS Malacca branch. Um, MNS is actually a membership based organization. We are a voice for nature. Uh, for family membership, it's 80 ringgit per year. So I think for less than one meal, a family meal, you can actually become a member for one year. And there are other memberships like ordinary youth and KPA at school in the school. So I think most of you may belong to KPA in your own school. If there are any schools like international school students who are here or teachers who have yet to start a, a club and Jinta alarm, uh, you can message me later on and then we can send you information. And to join as a, as a member, uh, kindly visit mns.my slash join us. When you become part of MNS, you're actually not alone. You're part of a very strong network for nature. We have 14 branches across Malaysia. Okay. Uh, the objectives of this particular series of talk is to provide a basic uh, understanding of the environment around us, the stars, the earth, the plants and the animals, and actually how we as a citizen of the earth can help to conserve them. Okay. And hopefully, I, since majority are students, uh, we if um, in future you know you may be keen to take on a science stream, in particular on conservation and environmental courses. The outcome of this uh, talk, uh, we will be having nature guiding for forest in the forest, for bird watching and also on the beach, and we will be also having a regular camping at Tanjung Tuan in Port Dixon. Okay, so. Kindly pay attention, you learn about nature, learn env about environment, and then we will invite you uh, to, to be part of the camp um, to actually gain the, ex the practical experience. So since most are, are new here, so just let me brief you about the talk. It will last for about 30 minutes, plus or minus a bit. And then we will open Q&A for 10 minutes. Uh, kindly key into the chat box or if you're from F, uh, watching from FB Live, you can key into that particular FB page. Uh, at the same time, when we do the Q&A discussions, we will also have a quiz. So the quiz, um, you can only submit once, okay? And it should be in your app because most, I think all of you have come through the app. So in about 40 minutes time, the in that particular event, uh, for today, there will be a, a, a word with a quiz that comes up. So you click on that and then you will do the quiz, right? And the, the fastest top three will win, uh, will win a prize. Uh, today we'll be giving bamboo straws to encourage more of uh, sustainability, use of um, uh, reuse, as well as uh, using something that is from the environment. So not, not a plastic straw, okay? The e-certificates, uh, when you've completed the quiz, if your mark is um, at least 70%, uh, you will get an e-certificate 
in your email, okay? But because we need to get Ministry of Education approval for, for each talk, it will probably take us some time to, to get to you because when we complete the, the, the quiz, uh, we, give, we open the quiz for two weeks. That means from now until the next uh, session, 26th of, of June, the, the quiz will still be open for, ad, for other uh, students to, to participate, like your, your classmates and so on, right? So they can watch the recording, this particular recording, and then they can do the quiz and then they submit. Uh, so we, we open for two weeks and then we will summarize all the attendees and all the results. And then we send to the Ministry of Education for approval. Only when we get their approval, will we be able to send uh, the um, certificates to you. So bear with us while we go through this process, okay? Um, we also need volunteers to be trained so if you're interested, you can WhatsApp me. I saw in the, in the event, there, there are a few people who I do not recognize. You're still new to the platform, you volunteered. Thank you so much. Uh, I will have to train you first before I can put your name. So later after the event, I will remove your name, okay? Uh, we need to be trained first, otherwise we don't know what we're doing. Okay. So the benefits of using this uh, ecopartners.online, this is our own uh, proprietary app, is that um, I think I just highlight number five, where students with the certificate, you can get extra curricular points for, your, for this particular program. Okay. All right, so this is the uh, complete series of talks. Uh, every two weeks, if you can remember, just every two weeks from now, uh, there'll be talk until October 30th, okay? And it's also on the same time, always at the same time at 2 p.m., okay? So today we may go a bit longer because of uh, this uh, briefing is a bit, uh, most of you have not been on this platform before. So I wanted to brief you so you understand the, the process. Okay, so if you haven't liked our Facebook page, uh, kindly take your phone um, and then uh, do that. Um, help to like and also follow our YouTube because the recordings will be paste uh, will be uploaded to the YouTube uh, channel. Okay. So today we come to the today uh, our speaker of the day, Professor Emily Tay. Thank you so much. Uh, she received her BA in Law and Sociology and a Master's in Sociology from uh, University of Kent, and as a PhD. Uh, from London School of Economics and Political Science. Uh, she's also a Fulbright uh, scholar at University of California in Los Angeles. So some of you may be inspired by her, her career her, in terms of uh, studies to also uh, take up further studies as well. So in 2015, she participated at the 13th uh, United Nations Congress on Crime Prevention and Criminal Justice in Doha, Qatar as an ex individual expert in criminology. And also she is a visiting fellow at uh, Raja Ratnam School of International Studies in uh, NTU, Nanyang Technical, Technological University in Singapore. She is taught at uh, UUT, uh, sorry, UUM, and is currently the, a professor at the National Defense University of Malaysia. Her pioneer research on transsexual in, uh, transsexuals in Malaysia was published in uh, 2002 and her latest book um, about the um, uh, BMF to 1MDB was pub uh, published in 2018. So with that, I would like uh, to welcome uh, Professor Emily Tay to give us a, a talk today. Thank you very much. And you need to unmute uh, Prof. Sorry, thank you very much, Mr. Wuti. Before you. I start, I would like to thank uh, Malaysian Nature Society for inviting me to give a talk to all of you. And uh, I hope all of you are staying well, you know, and safe at home. Anyway, let me share my screen first. Huh? Okay, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, good. Yes. Okay, good. Okay. Today, I will give you a, a brief introduction on what is human security, uh, millennium development goals, and sustainable development goals. 
Okay. This uh, human security, millennium development goals, and sustainable development goals are all concepts introduced by the United Nations. The United Nations is like a world government, okay, like an international government, okay. And um, the UN is an international organization founded in 1945. It is currently made up of 193 member states, including Malaysia. Malaysia is a member of the UN. Eh? There are also two United Nations observers. They are not really part of uh, UN, but they are like, you know, uh, very friendly towards UN, eh? like the Holy See or the Vatican and uh, Palestine. Eh? UN uses six official languages, Arabic, Chinese, English, French, Russian, and Spanish. Although there are 6,900 languages in the world, I think a lot of you would not know that there's so many languages in the world. Eh? There are actually 6,900 languages in the world. If you Google, you'll find that there are many ethnic groups in the world. You see, what we see in our country is only a few ethnic groups. But when you look at the whole world, there are many, many ethnic groups. There are thousands of ethnic groups in the world. Okay. The UN, okay, like I say, it's a, like a world uh, government. Uh, the headquarters is in New York, United States of America. Briefly, what is the role of the UN? The UN is to enable dialogues between its members, okay, and by hosting negotiations so that governments concerned can find areas of agreement and solve problems together. Basically, a UN is like, you know, helping countries which are having dispute to settle their dispute, or if they have some good ideas, they come together and discuss what is the good idea so that it's good for all the countries, okay? Basically, it's something like this, huh? they enable um, dialogues between its members, okay? So that they can solve their problems and also come to agreement on certain issues. The issues that UN deals with include they maintain international peace and security so that we don't fight, yeah? okay? Because we are from different countries, we don't have war. They protect human rights. They protect individuals inside the country. They deliver humanitarian aid. Okay, whenever there's a disaster in any country, they will try to deliver some help, you know, to assistance you know, to those countries. Yeah? They promote sustainable development. They have to promote sustainable development so that the world can still, you know, sustain all of us. If we keep on using the resources, you know, and then we don't um, uh, uh, put back the resources or grow back the resources, we will lose them. Eh? And also the most important thing is that they, in, they uphold international law. Like, you know, when uh, um, countries go to war, they have rules. They call it laws of armed conflict, okay? So that, you know, they don't simply just kill people. One of the rules is they cannot kill civilians and children, okay? Now, what the examples of UN specialized agencies and organizations, UN has many specialized agencies. Eh? These are only a few examples, okay? They have like food and agricultural organization, or they call it FAO. Eh? It's based in Rome, Italy, and they look after the food in the whole world, eh? the security of the food eh, in the whole world. They have also United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, or UNESCO, which is based in uh, Paris, France. World Health Organization, based in Geneva and Switzerland. Now, World Health Organization is very important now with the COVID-19, okay? You, you will read about WHO all the time in the newspaper. They will approve which vaccine to be used and so on, eh, and countries will follow, okay? United Nations Development Program uh, is based in New York, uh, US. They basically look after like poor countries, help them, you know, um, to uh, eradicate poverty and so on. United Nations Children's Fund, which is based in New York, US. Okay, these are just some of the examples. Huh? There are many more. Now, we now come to traditional security. I thought this is very interesting because uh, this will lead to why UN uh, introduced human security. Okay, that is the first thing that UN introduced. Huh? Now, what is traditional security? You see, I teach in a defense university. And we teach a lot about traditional security. Traditional security is about the protection of state from external military violence. Okay, what happened is that this is actually about war. Okay, you protect the country from external military violence, from being attacked by other military, you know, from other country. Basically, traditional security 
a military response is needed. When you talk about traditional security, you involve the military. And the military is very state-centric. They look after the state. Okay, they don't look after individuals, they look after the whole state. Okay. Now, after the Cold War, I, I don't know whether you understand what's Cold War. Cold War is uh, when you know the big powers in the country, yeah. They stop like having um, uh, argument, conflict, yeah, okay, because of a different ideology. Okay, so after the Cold War in the uh, 1990s, when countries um, they look, so, sorry, yeah, when countries pursue economic development and social development, yeah, the latter that is the pursuing of economic and social development, yeah, they brought along other forms of threats and vulnerabilities. So basically, they brought along other problems for the country. Yeah. For example, when we start to pursue economic development and social development, there will be poverty, poor health, access to education, because now we you know the, uh, the imbalance, inequality take place, okay, the rich, uh, you know, and the poor, okay. So what happened is that when economic development starts and it's not done properly, they will have people who are very rich and people who are very poor. So this brought in other forms of threats and vulnerabilities, okay? So I give the example like poverty, poor health, access to education. And these are issues that cannot handle by the military, okay? So now, you know, if you look at COVID, COVID, a lot of issues are, cannot be handled by the military, okay? Like, you know, people are out of a job. The military cannot handle it, okay? People are not getting access to food. That, is, that cannot be handled by the military. So what happening is that the countries now realize that they must broaden security issues. That's why now they introduce what we call non-traditional security, which focuses on non-military challenges to security. Okay. So previously, we only concentrated on traditional security, which, been, which involved the military because they go to war. But now we don't. We also look into non-traditional security. So non-traditional security is being implemented side by side together with traditional security. Okay. So I hope you can understand so far. Can you understand? Any questions so far? No. Okay. Good. You you have to okay, understand. Okay. You have to understand before I continue. Now because of the growing you know non-traditional security threats eh? that's why you know un now okay they decided to introduce what they call human security okay because there's a growing recognition of non-military or non-traditional security threats in global security debates that led to the united nations development program they came up with what they call the human development report in 1994 on human security Human security is part of non-traditional security. Yeah? Its emphasis was on reducing military spending and creating a peace dividend to ensure greater development, decrease economic and environmental imbalances in the world. So what they want to help is that, you know, so that the, all, these economic, the, all these imbalances in the world, you know, some countries are richer than others, some countries are so poor, some countries are so rich. They try to balance it so that, you know, the, the differences won't be so wide, okay? And of course, they go for sustainable development. Eh? Now, quotes from the report, this is very important, eh? especially for people who are studying on uh, security, eh? okay? Human security is not a concern with weapons. It is a concern with human life and dignity. So everybody should have access to the basics in life. Nobody should be left out. Even the poor people, the country have to look after them and give them food and give them access to education and health care. Okay, so all, all human beings should live with dignity. Okay, so basically human security is a concern with human life and dignity. Human security is people-centric or human-centric. Remember traditional security when the military goes to war, it is state-centric. But human security now is human-centric or people-centered. And there are two very important components of human security. Eh? Which is freedom from fear and freedom from one. Okay? Now, 
the UN really believe, the member countries of UN, uh, they believe that everyone should be free from violence, freedom from fear. We should not fear that we are always exposed to violence. You know, we should be free from violence. And we should also be free from one, what you call deprivation. We shouldn't be deprived of our basic needs. Even the poor people who have no money, they shouldn't be deprived of their basic needs. Okay, like, you know, access to food, access to healthcare, access to education. So that's what they call freedom from one. Basically, these two components reflect the basic needs of human security. Okay, so this is a very simple explanation. What is human security? Yeah? I hope everybody understands so far. If you don't understand, please stop. Huh? Okay, please stop me. Yeah? Okay, during the 1994, when UN introduced the human security, they came up with seven categories. Remember that it's 1994. Huh? Economic security basically deals with things like poverty. Okay, food security deals with access to food. Okay, health security is about access to health care. Environmental security is about sustainable development and uh, our healthy environment. Yeah? Personal security is more towards crime. Yeah? Community security is about uh, protecting the indigenous people, our culture, tradition, language, and so on. Yeah? And political security is about protecting human rights. Of course, you know, this is in 1994. Nowadays, in uh, 2021, yeah, we have more uh, security issues being introduced. For example, now we have cyber security, okay, protecting our internet and so on. Eh? So that is another security issue. The new ones like cyber security, resource security, water security, and so on. Eh? Okay, so it's not just seven now, it's more than seven now. Now, what is Millennium Development Goal and Sustainable Development Goal? You see, after the human security um, uh, being introduced, UN decided that it's not enough. So what happened is that they feel that they must introduce more um, uh, aims uh, so that we can reach these aims or these objectives and make the world a better place. Okay, Because human security is only a few. So now they wanted to expand it. So they introduced what they call Millennium Development Goals. Okay, And Millennium Development Goals is uh, introduced in year 2000. And by 2015, all member countries should have achieved the objectives. However, not all objectives are, have been achieved. So what happened is that UN con continued with implementing the Sustainable Development Goals from 2016 to 2030. Yeah? These are actually continuation of the Millennium Development Goals. They introduced more goals after this. Yeah? Okay. In June 1992, at the Earth Summit in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, more than 178 countries adopted Agenda 21. Agenda 21 is a comprehensive plan of action to build a global partnership for sustainable development to improve human lives and protect the environment. So what happened is that in 1992, 178 countries out of 193, yeah, they decided to adopt the Agenda 21, which is actually a global partnership. Everybody cooperate eh, for sustainable development okay, in the whole world to improve human lives and also to protect the environment. So when they agreed to adopt the agenda, now Millennium Development Goals, okay, they were introduced you know, in a Millennium Summit in September 2000 at UN headquarters in New York. Okay? The summit led to the elaboration of eight Millennium Development Goals to reduce extreme poverty by 2015. So the most important objective of the MDG is actually to reduce extreme poverty by year 2015. Okay. Now these are the eight goals uh, that was uh, introduced. Okay. Okay. Of course, the first one is eradicate extreme poverty and hunger achieve universal primary education, promote gender equality and empower women, reduce child mortality, improve maternal health, combat HIV, AIDS, malaria, and other diseases, ensure environmental sustainability. Okay, we want a healthy environment. Yeah? And to develop global partnership for development. So these are only eight goals. Okay, when you go to sustainable uh, development, there's 17 goals. Yeah? We'll go to that afterwards. 
Now the MDGs or the Millennium Development Goals, uh, they are interdependent. So all the eight goals are dependent on each other. You cannot just say I achieve one goal and then you know I don't have to achieve others. Usually when you achieve one goal, you may also achieve other goals or you achieve other goals, you achieve, uh, you know, sort of like they're all interdependent. Eh? For example, good health enables children to learn better and adults to work better. Okay, so health leads to children learning better and also adults work better. Men, women and women should be given the same access to health care. So this is actually about gender equality. Reducing poverty and hunger positively influences but also depends on better health. Okay, And healthy environment is essential to good health. Okay, So all the MDGs are interdependent and they're interrelated. Okay? Now, when we link up security, okay, all the seven security issues with the MDGs, this is what we get. If we achieve uh, MDGs, we also achieve the security issues. Okay, so it's like economic security, you will achieve MDG 1, which is no extreme poverty and hunger. If you achieve economic security, you already achieve no extreme poverty and hunger. Okay. So when you achieve the other way around, if you achieve, uh, you know, uh, the MDG one, you also achieve economic security. Okay. So basically, you know, uh, MDG is an extension of the security issues. Okay. So you, if you look at environmental uh, security, uh, if you ensure environmental sustainability and you develop a global partnership for development, you already achieve environmental security. So basically, they are all related. Now, did the member states of the uh, UN manage to achieve the MDGs in 2015? Okay, this one I took from the UN, uh, the, the report. Uh. Globally, the number of people living in extreme poverty had declined by more than half, falling from 1.9 billion in 1990 to 836 million in 2015. Basically, they have achieved, you know, some, uh, you know, MDG goals, okay? The primary school net enrollment rate in developing regions had reached 91% in 2015, increased from 83% in 2000. So basically, in the whole in a developing region, now 91% of children go to school. Previously, it was only 83%. So basically, you know, with the introduction of the MDGs, there were success cases. Okay. So you see like in developing re uh, regions, the number of deaths of children under five had declined from 12.7 million in 1990 to almost 6 million in 2015 globally. So almost half or more than half, sorry. More, but however, more work is still needed. We want zero, okay? We want zero problem, okay? We want the, the target to be no one left behind. So everybody have access okay, to basic needs. Huh? So because more work is needed, that's why they decided to introduce and continue with the MDGs, okay, they introduced the Sustainable Development Goals, okay, and this has to be achieved by year 2030. We have a, a, another, what, nine years to achieve it, okay. So at the United Nations Conference in Sustainable Development Rio de Janeiro, Brazil in 2012, Member states decided to launch a process to develop a set of SDGs to build upon the MDGs. Okay. In 2015, the UN Sustainable Development Summit was held at UN headquarters in New York. It was attended by all the member states, 193 of them. Huh? Okay. You see, the world has 193, I mean, the UN has 193 member states. Huh? The member states adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development with 17 SDGs now. So from eight, now we have 17. Okay. The SDG, the 17 SDGs aim to transform our world and to improve people's life and prosperity on a healthy planet. Healthy planet is about sustainable development, sustainable environment. Okay. Countries, regions, cities, business sector, civil society are actively engaged in implementing the agenda and the SDGs. So now it's not just countries only, you know, it's not government only have to look into SDG. 
even business sector, civil society, people like us, normal people, you know, I mean, you know, the, the rakyat, you know, we also have to help to meet the SDGs. They are mobilizing efforts to end all forms of poverty, fighting inequalities and tackling climate change while ensuring that no one is left behind. The, one, the, the word no one is left behind is very, very important uh, because we want everybody to benefit from the world. Okay. Now, UN Secretary General at the time, the Secretary General is something like the Prime Minister of the government, okay, because it's an international government. Yeah? So you have, they call them, they call him a, a Secretary General. At that time, it is Mr. Ban Ki moon uh, from Korea, okay, he was the UN Secretary General. He said that the SDG is a roadmap to ending global poverty, building a life of dignity for all, and leaving no one behind. This is a very important word, leaving no one behind. It is also a clarion call to work in sure. partnership and intensify efforts to share prosperity, empower people's livelihoods, ensure peace and heal our planet for the benefit of this and future generations. You see, they, we are not only thinking about ourselves now, we are also thinking about our future gen generation, our children, our grandchildren, our great-grandchildren and so on. We want the world to be able to sustain, you know, for a long, long time, you know, sustain people for a long, long time, okay? Okay, these are the 17 sustainable development goals. Eh? No poverty, zero hunger, good health and well-being, well-being, quality education, gender equality, clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean energy, decent work and economic growth industry, innovation, and infrastructure, and so on. Eh? I won't read everything. Eh? Now, this is how it looks like eh, when they put into a nice uh, poster. Okay, now human security and SDGs. If you achieve no poverty, which is SDG 1, zero hunger, which is SDG 2, Reducing inequality with SDG 10, you will achieve economic security. Okay, For food security, zero hunger, good health, you will achieve food security. What about environmental security? If we achieve affordable and clean energy, which is SDG 7, climate action, SDG 10, we would have achieved environmental security. Okay, So all these are interrelated. Ne? Now, what about Malaysia? Has Malaysia adopted the SDGs? Of course, Malaysia is a member of the UN. Okay. In fact, you know, we have this uh, Kumpulan Rentas Party Parliament Malaysia or All Party Parliamentary Group Malaysia, and they are actually supposed to look into the SDG issues. Okay. Like um, I before the COVID started, uh, they were already doing some good work. They were actually going to uh, uh, some places, you know, around the country to see what they can do and help, you know, to make uh, um, the, the environment better, to get people out of poverty and so on. So our parliament, our politicians, you know, they were doing quite good work with uh, uh, trying to achieve the SDGs. Eh? So basically, yes, Malaysia has adopted the SDGs. You see... You see, now the SDG is not just the government, as I said earlier on, it's also business sector, everybody, uh, the civil society and so on, we all have to help achieve the SDG. Like Sunway University, they even have a center on SDG, okay, Sustainable Development Goal, and they have been giving talks on sustainable developments. Eh? Okay, then you see Samsung, Samsung is also going for helping to uh, achieve the SDGs. You see, this one is a Siaman Airlines, okay. And you see, this is all the Nestle, Cargill, Tesco, even Starbucks. They all try to achieve some, some uh, of the SDGs. Okay, now these are some of the UN uh, development. Uh, this is UNDP. Uh, you, uh, you know, they're trying to uh, help eradicate poverty. So they work in nearly 170 countries and territories, helping to eradicate poverty, reduce inequalities, and build resilience so countries can sustain uh, progress. Now, this is very interesting. Do you know that you, know, you can actually print a home using a 3D printer 
Now I put on some uh, links for you where you can go to all this YouTube and watch. You see the how they print the home. You see Europe's largest 3D printer prints an entire two-story house. You look at the houses there, uh, the the two pictures. They're all you printed out using a 3D printer. You can actually construct a home under four thousand US dollars eh, to give poor people a home. Okay. 4,000 US dollars is about what, 16,000, less than 20,000 ringgit. Ne? So you can never buy a house for less than 20,000 ringgit in Malaysia. But perhaps with a 3D printer, you can. Ne? Okay, now you, this is a United Nations Children's Fund. Okay, they help save children's life, defend their rights, and so on. Ne? Okay. This is a food and agricultural organization. Okay. They you know, negotiate agreements between development, developing and developed countries and the source of technical knowledge and information to aid development. So basically, FAO goes to this poor country, help them you know, uh, in their agriculture and so on, help them to grow food and uh, produce food and so on. Uh. Okay, then this is the United Nations Educational uh, uh, Science and so on. Uh. Okay, sorry. Here, what happened? Okay, so they focus on uh, everything from teacher training to helping improve education worldwide. Okay, now this is UNESCO heritage sites. Okay, heritage is our legacy from the past. Okay, this is something like community security. Eh? They make sure that our culture, our heritage, they are all safe and not be destroyed. Okay. Now, even Malaysia, you see Gunung Mulu National Park, this is our heritage, Kinabalu Park, and also the Langong Valley, uh, Perak Man. Uh, if you go to the museum uh, in uh, Perak, you see this. Okay, now this is how, you know, these are pictures which I took, you know, when I went to an exhibition in Malaysia, uh, okay, in Kuala Lumpur. Uh, you see how poor people can be? This poor little boy doesn't go to school, help the grandmother, you know, to uh, um, sell coconut, okay. You see the, the one on the left, which is uh, all these um, immigrant workers, they all try to save money so they can save money, uh, send money home to their country because they are so poor. They all share one room, so many of them, okay? Because they want to save costs, okay? Look at the picture on the right, people live in so poor places, okay? Look at this, so sad, isn't it? This picture, that's what SDGs, MDGs, and human security wants to do. They want to get rid of poverty and leave no one behind. Okay? So, oh, she's still working. Okay? Basically, we are trying to eradicate poverty and make poverty history in the world so that no one is left behind. It doesn't matter who you are, okay? Whether you're poor, rich, you know, you are uh, um, uh, what ethnic group, you know, what religion, it doesn't matter. Okay, we want to make this world a very nice world for everybody to live in. Okay, and it's sustainable. Huh? Okay, so these are such some of the suggested reading. You know, you, maybe you can go there and read more. Okay, that's my presentation uh, today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. So I hope that uh, everybody have a bit uh, a bit more understanding what is actually sustaining sustainable development goals and why we need them actually and the history historical uh, part of it from the um, millennium development goals coming to the sustainable development goals. So now we open the floor for questioning. Uh, Lanisha, uh, over to you please. Okay, thank you Mr. Woody. Uh, very good afternoon uh, to participate and everyone who has participated in this uh, event today. Um, hello, my name is Lenisha. Lenisha? Yes. Mr. Hold on. Uh, during this uh, period, I, I need to show uh, our audience how to do the quiz. Okay, let me share the screen first. Sorry about that. Forgot. So this is, you can see the photo, right? So this is the app. And then you go, I think you all come through the uh, to this uh, talk by the app. So you can see now the quiz is open. Okay, so you click on this and then you can do your, uh, you can answer here. All right, so good luck. So back to you, Lanisha, thank you. All right, I'll 
Okay. Uh, so hello everyone. My name is Lenisha, and I'll be conducting the Q and A session for today's event. So uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Professor Day, for the very insightful presentation. And without further ado, uh, we'll start with the first question, shall we, Professor Day? Okay. So I have a few questions here. Uh, just a moment. Okay, uh, we have a question from Anna Tan. She said that she's a bit confused. If she's, she said that freedom from want, she un she's a bit confused because uh, if it's freedom from hunger, then she can understand that particular phrase. But if it's freedom from want, what does it actually mean? Okay, you see what happened is that these two phrases are from the UN. They introduced the two uh, phrases. Uh, it didn't come from me, okay? So freedom from want means that you are free from deprivation. You're not deprived of the basic things in life. Like the basic things for us to live on is food, uh, access to healthcare, education, a roof over our head and so on. So basically what it means is that we shouldn't be deprived of basic things for us to live. Okay, um, you know, a uh, reasonably, you know, sort of like healthy life. Okay, is that okay? So you basically the, freedom the from one is Freedom that, from deprivation, then I can understand yeah. better. You say freedom from deprivation, then it sounds better. Yeah. It's once is once uh okay, basic needs. We have our basic needs, and then we have once. Of course, basic needs is more important than once, you know. Yeah. Okay, uh, shall we move on to the second question? Okay, the second question uh is does animal rights fall into the environmental security? Uh, yes, of course. Of course, environmental security, we make sure that we are sustainable. If we are sustainable, that means we cannot simply just, you know, kill animals, you know. I mean, you, you know, there are certain endangered species which we cannot touch, you see. So, you know, it is it covers. So basically, when environmental security, we want it to be sustainable. Okay, sustainable meaning that it's not just the trees and plants, you know, it's also animals and so on, eh? The, the flora and fauna, okay? Okay, thank you very much, Professor. Uh, the third question is, uh, is there a health security problem such as people who can't afford it? How, they, how are they helped as they are in the current situation, uh, for example, COVID-19? We, we, well, in a way, you can say that it is a, security, a health security issues now, okay? So like Malaysia, we are fortunate that we have the money to buy our vaccine, okay? But those countries which don't have the money to buy the vaccine, if you have been following the news, uh, the G7, you know, the, the, the top big countries in the world, uh, they have already agreed to sort of like donate millions of vaccines to this poor country. Basically, the UN will all have to get together to help this poor country. The UN has the funds, you know, coming from all these rich countries. They take the fund and buy COVID, you know, vaccines for the poor country. Okay. That's why we need to be part of the UN, is it? Because they help poor countries. Okay. So uh, we have a question from Alisa Zarina. She said, uh, what have the government do to overcome SDG 1 and 2? Why is there still gelandangan or homeless in the city like Kuala Lumpur? Okay. I, I think our government is trying the, their best to help. Okay. But... Um, how should I say it? Uh, perhaps they, you know, they are not doing enough. Okay. So they need to go to the ground. But we also are very fortunate that we have very good NGOs, you know. A lot of these NGOs have been really helping the poor. Like they started the soup kitchen, you know, people donate for the soup kitchen, you know. And then they also have been, you know, like going around distributing food, you know, during the COVID, you know. Some of my students actually went out to help, okay? They actually became volunteer and went to distribute food. So basically, you know, our government, perhaps they, 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 they couldn't reach out to everybody. So we as a, a civil society, we also should know, you know, where the poor people are, we help them. Perhaps we also help them to register themselves with the government so that the government can give them aids, okay? So what happened is that uh, I know that some NGOs, okay, one of them I was involved with, uh, we actually helped to register poor people, okay, uh, you know, to uh, uh, with the portal, you know, the, the Ministry of uh, Welfare, the, the uh, what do you call that, the, 
uh, welfare department, they actually have a portal for you to register poor people. Okay, after you register them, the welfare department will go and reach out to them. So perhaps that's one way we can help our government, you see, so that we, we recognize the poor people, we help them, we register them with the government so that the government can reach out to them. Okay, thank you so much, Professor Tay. Um, I have a few questions also. May I ask a few questions? Okay, okay uh, not difficult ones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are the differences and similarities between the Millennium Development Goals and sustain Sustainable Development Goals? I don't think there's much difference. I think it's a continuation and perhaps they add on to it, you know, because they really want to reach the targets. MDGs, we didn't reach all the targets. So now, you know, they want to really achieve more targets, you see. So they, they add in more SDGs, you know, so that, you know, we will eventually be able to reach more targets. If you look at the MDGs, it is not so, like, you know, um, they're not enough. There are certain things which are left out. So now the SDGs, they add on to it uh, so that we can achieve more. Okay, that is the mm -hmm. difference between the MDGs and SDGs. Thank you very much, Prashanti. And I have another one too. Uh, based on your opinion, uh, has the pandemic greatly impacted the process of fulfilling the human security, millennium de development goals, and the sustainable development goals? Has it? Yes, definitely. Impact? It has impacted on uh, the world, is it? It's like, you know, the SDG that was uh, uh, being run by our, our government, the, the, uh, the parliament group, they actually have uh, some programs, you know. Um, uh, sort of like a schedule to be run, you know, in the country to help the poor, okay? But they have to stop the program because of the COVID. So basically, some of these programs were not running at all. Actually, I was uh, involved partly with them, you see. So they, they wanted to do some programs because the COVID come in, they couldn't. But some NGOs, they still try to do a bit, especially, you know, reaching out to them, giving them food, you know. The first, the most important thing is make sure that they have something to eat. So I think that they're still doing it, you know, providing food, like, you know, the soup kitchen is still open. But to say that, you know, they run some workshops, help them to, you know, sort of like in, uh, increase their income and so on, uh, those have to stop. They couldn't run it because that one, they have to do it face to face. You see, and don't forget, you know, a lot of these poor people so don't have access to Wi-Fi, internet or computers. So they cannot go online. They have to go face to face to reach out to them. So yes, I would say that the pandemic has actually, you know, impacted, you know, and actually hampered the progress of SDGs in Malaysia. Thank you so much, Mr. And one more question before I pass the uh, pass it to Mr. Woody. So I was a bit interested in the 3D printer. Uh, so uh, how effective is the 3D printer actually? Like when you construct a house using a 3D printer, how effective is it, and how? What uh, difference does it make like from a normal uh, building uh, built using cement and uh, built using 3D printer? What are the differences? I think the 3D printer is very good because uh, so far I've not read anything that the houses are no good, you know. It actually provides a, a space, you know, a place for people to live in, especially poor people. You know, if you Google uh, and you look into the, the YouTube, uh, you see that the house is very beautiful, okay? right can print so many thousands of pages right now yeah. i think same thing the 3d printer can print many houses okay and then you don't need you know like employ workers it adds to the so now it can even print out two-story houses you know so you can imagine how advanced it is okay and of course there is also this prefabricated house you know you know that they they already sort of like uh, built part of the door and everything you just need to assemble it together okay I mean, that is another option, but I think yeah. those are more expensive than the 3D printer. That's true. And uh, uh, before I end this session, does anyone have any questions? Uh, you guys can drop it in the chat box. I think... Uh, before I end this can session. I, can I drop in a question? I think Jehan raised his hand. Maybe Jehan can unmute. Uh, I have a question. So, like, it's like when you 3D print like a house or maybe like a boat, it's like you print it, is, uh, is it like plastic made or like is it made from like, I don't know, I don't know, cement or something. 
Sorry, I, I think it's cement. It's like cement. Okay. Yeah, it, it's real, real cement. Yes, it's not yeah, like, it's not plastic. No, plastic is. I thought it was plastic because when you put there, it looks like that. It looks like it was plastic. If you look at it, it looks like cement. But do you know that three D printer can even print food? You just go and Google. It's very interesting. If you go and Google, like when you put that, mm -hmm. okay. Uh, does anyone have any other questions? Hi, um, I have uh, a few okay. questions. I have this here from MNS. Uh, Prof, thank you very much for the very informative speech. It was an eye opener for everyone. Um, a few questions. In your opinion, where is Malaysia, Malaysia actually in achieving the SDG? I think the last I checked a few years ago, we are a bit behind. Um, so maybe you can share with us um, uh, where we are at the moment. Uh, I also see, uh, I'm also sometimes involved in EIA, and I find that uh, during the EIA presentation, there is no hard and fast um, or maybe a written requirement on achieving uh, these uh, sustainable development goals for future developments. So uh, is there any, um, for example, a requirement, a policy that, that indicates any future improvement, any future uh, development has to fulfill the SDG? Uh, it's already 2000, the, the SDG was developed in 2016, but in 2021, where we are today, there are still many people who are unaware of this SDG and its requirements. Lastly, is uh, how can we as society, as as uh, as we all are, how can we uh, also chip in to, to support these uh, sustainable development goals? Okay. Thank you, Prof. That's my okay, okay. Yeah. I Malaysia has achieved um, some of the goals, but I wouldn't say all. Okay, like healthcare. No, we we are we actually have very good healthcare in Malaysia. At least you can see a doctor for one ringgit. You know, you just go to the government uh, the hospitals actually can get access to a doctor for one ringgit. And if you really cannot even afford the one ringgit, you know, they will give you free. Okay, that is an achievement, you know. I remember going to Cambodia, you know, there's no hospital, you know, the foreigners have to build hospitals there to help the people there. Okay, the people just don't have the money. In that sense, Malaysia has, in terms of health, yes, Malaysia has achieved quite a lot. Even education, okay, the illiteracy in Malaysia is not that high compared to other countries, okay, our illiteracy rate is very low, okay, so our poverty, yes, there was a, a bit of a question, you know, it's, it's quite questionable, the, the statistics, because uh, some people say that, you know, the government claim that now we are like, you know, um, uh, one or two percent, you know, po uh, uh, poverty. Yeah? But actually, some uh, other reports say that we are more. Okay. Now, yes, we have to try to achieve the goals of SDG because every year we have to send a report to the UN. You know, and the statistics are all uh, being printed out and uh, in the report. Okay. Like it or not, there is also a committee in uh, the UN. You know, monitoring our achievements. Okay. That's why you know the Parliament now. Uh, we are quite serious on uh, trying to achieve some of the goals, okay? So what happened is that we are being monitored. I guess if uh, the whole world, you know, if many countries didn't achieve the SDGs, they will continue again after year 2030, okay? And then in, you see when uh, our country were trying to achieve the SDGs, suddenly COVID comes in. We also cannot do much now. We, you know, they cannot go out and do hands-on, you know? Uh, work with all these uh, uh, B40. In fact, it was quite interesting when I was involved in the program, uh, they actually was talking about doing uh, like workshops, uh, baking, cooking, you know, helping them to start bakery and stuff like that, you know. So all these things have to be on hold now. Okay. And uh, what, 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 okay. How, how can we help? Uh? Okay. I mean, we have to be vigilant. Like one of the, like earlier on, like I say, you know, if we see any poor people, okay, we help them, okay, we register them with the welfare department, okay. I mean, some NGOs have been doing that, okay, but how many can we reach out to, okay? The poor people, they don't contact us, you know. We have to actually go out and find them. Some of them don't have, in fact, many of them don't have phones, don't have access to internet, don't have anything. So basically, they are like a hidden population, you know. 
we have to go and find them and help them. Okay. You see, during the COVID, uh, that's when there's no soup kitchen, nothing. Suddenly, you see them coming out. And you know, like my student was saying, you go to the street, you see many of these poor people on the street. Suddenly, you see all of them because people are not going out and they are the only one out there. So what they, the NGOs did was to actually go out and reach out to them. Okay. I guess we as a society, we have to be more vigilant. Okay. Like, you know, meeting all these goals, like for crime. Okay. Like I was always telling the police, you know, we should put more CCTVs. One of the things that we can do is as, a, as a, the rakyat, yeah, if we can put CCTVs in front of our door so that we can monitor the road that we are living in. That is also helping. You know, if you go to places like Singapore and China, the CCTVs are all over the place. That's why crime rate is so low. Immediately somebody commit a crime and the next thing is they can see already. They can see the criminal, you know. Because why? The people put CCTVs all over the place. This is one thing we can do, you know. In our streets where we live, we can actually, if we can afford it, put CCTVs, okay, to monitor. That's one way of helping, okay. Of course, those people who are rich, those companies who can afford it, you know, they can do more, you see. Like I, at one stage, I was making joke, you know, I said, you know, since Asia is so rich, uh, perhaps they can adopt a small, a small, like, you know, a taman, you know, put CCTV all over the place and say, you know, now everybody can be safe, you know or something like this, you see? So there are many ways of helping if you want to do it, okay? okay. Thank you very much, Professor Tee, for the very insightful uh, information. Anyone else have any questions to ask before I end this Q&A session? Okay, great. So I pass, the, uh, I pass it to Mr. Woody. Thank you, Lenisha, and thank you, Prof. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now you can be seen in every taman. That would be a good one uh, to, to start this program. So um, right now, let me bring you to the quiz. I think quite a number have submitted. I'll just bring you to the share the screen. So this is live, OK? So that, um, that you know that who actually won the prizes. Um, I cannot mute this person because I don't know who's talking. Okay, so 47 people submitted and today we had 168 participants. So thank you so much. And so these are the participants or oh, the quiz results. Okay, so we have um, Lim, Lim Jung Chen and Nodina, 100%. No Afiza, 100%, no, no Riza, no Niza, and no Rina. So today we're gonna to give five uh, sets of straws because um, an anonymous uh, sponsor came in. So thank you so much, Mr. Anonymous or Miss Anonymous. So the top five will get the, the, the straws. Uh, I won't get the straw because I was testing the, the thing. Um, so, yeah, you, you need to PM me your address. Uh, so many people participated. Thank you so much. And um, message me your address. I have already left my number. I'll leave it again in the chat box to the, the winners, please. So that uh, I, I have the, your address, then we will ship it to you, okay? All right, so congratulations. And let me see. So our next talk will be on the 29th of, of June. Yes, 26th of June, sorry, 26th of June at 2 p.m. So again, your, your e-certs uh, will come in a bit later on, okay? Because we are trying, this is our, our first time doing this um, uh, with the approval of Ministry of Education. So we're trying to harmonize the, the, the flow together with them. So uh, it will take some time. And uh, kindly spread the word to all your school friends, especially, and get everybody to come on board. So hopefully next two weeks from now, we can get up to 500 people and that will blow up the Zoom that we have. But uh, nevertheless, you those who cannot make it to the Zoom because we exit, for, exceeded 500, uh, you can go to Facebook Live 
uh, but you still can do the quiz, okay? The app, uh, in terms of quiz, there's no limit on the number of people who can do the quiz. But in terms of coming into the Zoom, because we have the Zoom account, we can only have 500. Uh, so the rest have to uh, go into the, the Facebook Live. So the process will be this recorded uh, session, we're gonna put on to the YouTube channel and the link to that YouTube channel uh, to that talk, to this talk will be inside the event. So inside this particular event page that we have uh, this app, okay? So your friends who have not joined, for them to get experience, they can always come back. Uh, I mean, go register, go to the app, uh, watch, the, you watch the recording and then do the quiz. So the quiz will be open for two weeks. But those of you who have already done the quiz, of course, you cannot do anymore because the quiz button will not appear for you, okay? Only those who registered, watched the video, uh, recorded video, and have not done the quiz, then the, the button will appear for them, all right? So again, thank you, uh, Prof. Day, for your time. And I think the take home message is that if you're talking about the poor, everybody, every one of us can reach out. You just have to help them, okay? Uh, whichever capacity you can do. And uh, so that, that'll be the take home message. And there are some follow up that you can, for example, the 3D printing, you can always do some research on YouTube. There are many, many videos to learn more about that technology. And maybe one of you uh, will specialize in, in that particular technology in the future. All right, again, thank you, Prof. Thank you, Alenisha, and also Maya for your support in uh, getting the- Thank you very much. Thank you in getting all the, the questions coming through. It's, we're a bit longer today, but uh, never mind because it's the first time we had to do a lot of uh, uh, informing you how the process flow. All right then, thank you very much and stay safe everybody. Put on your mask. Okay, until next uh, two weeks from now. See you then, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye everyone. Bye everybody. Take care. Bye. bye. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.